there is no shortcuts. There aren't. But there are things that you can do that will definitely make it much, much easier to learn mathematics, and you'll learn at a more efficient pace. And in this video, we're, we're going to talk about those. But let's talk about why math is hard first, because I think that really, really relates to, you know, how you can attack the problem. Because if you realize why math is difficult, then you can try to solve that problem by taking the appropriate actions to solve it. So math is difficult for two reasons. It takes time and it takes patience. Think about that for a minute. Let's, let's focus on time. If you're going to be doing mathematics, it takes a lot of time, right? <laughs> it just takes time. You have to sit down. You have to solve those problems. You're going to get stuck. And time is precious, right? You only have so many hours in a day. We all have super busy lives. We do things. And we need time to relax, too. Like, I like to play video games, right? I mean, there are things I like to do besides math. I, I want to play more guitar because I want to get better at it. I want to learn to sing. I mean, there's all kinds of things I want to do. And time is always an issue. So if you want to learn math, it's the same thing. Time is the biggest issue. Many people, they go to work. And I had a lot of students like this. I taught thousands of students over the years. And, and they would come to class after going to work. And they would study math. I'm getting goosebumps. I have so much respect for people who work and go to college. I, I just think that is, I think those people just don't get enough credit in life. That is amazing, right? Because when I was in college, I took out student loans. I took out a bunch of debt and I went to college. It worked out for me. I was able to you know, pay off my debt. It wasn't crazy debt or anything, but it worked for me, right? But those of you that work just, yeah, props. It's, it's, it's a big task. And I don't think that, I don't think society realizes how hard it is to go to school and study mathematics. It is, it is incredibly hard. So time, right? It takes a lot of time to do math. And so that's a big problem. So how do you manage your time? How do you fix that problem? Well, make it a daily habit. That's one thing you can do, right? Do a little bit every day. Okay. Just a little bit every day. Even if you just do one math problem every day, it's going to make you better, right? Or set a minimum. Like if you're in a math class, obviously, you know, doing one math problem every day is not going to cut it, right? If you just do one math problem every day in your math class, you're probably going to fail pretty hard. But if you make it a goal to do a minimum of one problem every day, then on those days that you don't want to study, on those days when you're not motivated, you're going to become more disciplined because it really is all about discipline. It's about the ability to do things that you don't want to do, right? If, if you wake up today and you don't want to do it, you need to do it anyways. You don't have to overdo it, but you need to get yourself to do it, even just one problem. And I think it's, it's a lot easier for people to say, hey, I'm going to sit down and I'm just going to do a math problem really quick, just really quick, because I saw that video on the internet and I'm just going to do a math problem. It'll take me 10 minutes. I'm just going to do a quick problem. That helps tremendously. That daily habit of doing a math problem builds self-discipline and it builds your mind. And later on throughout the day, you're going to be thinking about that math problem. You'll be thinking about that quadratic equation you solved and how you messed up with the negative sign inside the square root or whatever, right? It will help you tremendously. It will literally change your life. It will change you. It will change the way you think about everything. Math changed the way I talk. It changed the way I think. It completely changed my life. So that's something you can do to overcome the time aspect is do a little bit every day. That's going to make you better at math. And again, even on those days when you don't want to study, if you just do a little bit, it's going to really take you to the next level. Patience is the hard one. Patience. Because you have to realize that patience is something that you need in order to study math, right? You have to be patient. It's going to take time. There are going to be math classes that you take or math subjects that you're trying to learn on your own that you just won't get, right? You're just not going to get it. And I can sit here and I can tell you, try harder, try harder. Eventually you'll get it, but you might not. It might take you a year to get it. I mean, that's just my personal experience. I've studied certain things that I just didn't get. I just gave up. I quit. I gave up. I pushed forward. I said, you know what? I'm not going to understand this for the test. I've put in a ridiculous amount of time. I've gone to see the teacher. I've looked online. I just don't get it. 
it's time for me to move on to something else. And I moved on, right? So the ability to know when to quit is important, okay? Now, I'm not saying you should quit, but you need to know when to fold. It's like that like that song. Um, I think it's called The Joker, you know, know when to fold. You, know, you need to know when to move on, right, in life, in anything, right? At the same time, you don't want to, like, be a quitter, right? You don't want to just say, oh, it's hard. I give up. No, that, that's that's not going to work in mathematics, right? It's not going to work. I'm sorry. And, and I'm laughing because because it's true, right? It's true. It's just so hard. You have to push. Push yourself. But there comes a point where you're just spending too much time on something and you have to move on. You know, when, when I was in graduate school, I had this advisor that was assigned to me. He was this uh, famous Argentinian mathematician. And he told me something in his office. He was, he was a tough guy. He was really like a tough guy. Uh, he told me a couple of things, but he told me that I should not spend too much time working on a math problem because my time was limited. He was really serious when he said it. He said, don't spend too much time working on math problems. Like, you know, manage your time. You, you can't afford to spend, you know, X hours. I think he said three hours or something. He just threw out some arbitrary number on a math problem because your time is valuable. And I thought about what he said, but I had a really hard time following his advice. And what happened was I found myself waking up at three in the morning. I'd go to bed at nine, wake up at 3 a.m., go to my kitchen table, because that's all I had. I didn't have any furniture. I had one chair and a kitchen table in the living room. That's it. It was a very barren living environment. And I sat there and I would do my math. I would lay out all my notes and just say, okay, how am I going to figure out this proof? And I would just struggle and I would obsess. I was obsessed. And, and you kind of need to be obsessed to learn, you know, higher level math because it takes so much time and patience. But I should have taken his advice, right? Sometimes you have to know when to quit. So patience, right? It requires patience. So there's nothing really you can do about the patience other than like realize that it's going to take time. And sometimes you just have to move on. You just have to move on. Another example was when I was learning a mathematical induction. Induction is a proof technique that people who study math learn. Uh, in my case, it was taught in pre-calculus. Many people learn it in discrete mathematics. Other people learn it in courses on proof writing. And it's a really nice technique. But there are certain induction proofs that require inequalities. And it's funny because I have, I know how to do it now, and I have videos on those problems here on my YouTube channel and those videos, they have a lot of views, but they also have the most dislikes. So out of all my induction videos, those have the most dislikes. You might say, why? Are they bad videos? No, I think they're excellent videos. I mean, I think they're great, but but it's hard for people because it's a tough topic, right? Those inequality proofs are hard to explain. So it's something that everyone struggles with, including myself. So people look at the video, they're like, oh, I don't get it, dislike, which is fine, I don't care. Haters are gonna hate. The point is, there are certain things that you're just not going to get right now. And sometimes you just have to move on. Looking back, I think there's a few things that I should have done that would have made it easier for me. So for one, I think that getting a timer can be helpful. It doesn't work for all people, but it does work for some people. If you have some type of timer that you can use to time your study sessions, it works. Now, the problem with using a timer is that when you set the timer, say you say, hey, I'm gonna study for 30 minutes. You're still mentally thinking, oh, it's gonna take me 30 minutes? I don't know if I wanna spend 30 minutes on math. So if you have that mindset, don't get a timer. But if you're the kind of person that likes to time your sessions, if you're a very organized person, if you're a person that is able to make to-do lists and follow them, if you need that structure, then definitely get a timer. Here's one I have, I have a few timers. Um, I'll leave a link in the description to this one. This one is good because it's simple, you just turn it, okay? And then when it ends, it beeps. There it goes. And you can control the speed and all of that stuff. It's called Yoon Beowit. It's just some random timer I got on Amazon. And I'll leave a link in the description in case you want to check it out. It's also useful for other things, like if you're doing exercise or you're doing your laundry somewhere. It's just useful to have a simple timer that you can set somewhere and set it and forget it and it'll beep and it'll let you know when the time is up. So I use it all the time for all kinds of things besides mathematics. Um, I do use it for math sometimes, but sometimes I don't. So pretty cool. I'll leave a link in the description to the timer. Another thing you can do is find more resources. This is one of the reasons I have so many math books behind me. I have a lot of math books, not just these. I have, I have books over there. I have books over there. I have books on the floor. I have another bookshelf over there that you can't see. Uh, I have books everywhere. I have books in another room. 
And the reason I have so many math books is I struggled with math, right? I had a hard time learning math. So I started just buying math books so I could get different explanations. So when I didn't understand something in one math book, I could pick up another book and understand it. Here's an example. So here's a math book that I have read, uh, not entirely, but a good chunk. This is a book that uh, I used for a course actually long ago, and it's called Advanced Calculus, A Course in Mathematical Analysis by Fitzpatrick. Um, it's a pretty good book. When I was taking the class, which was Advanced Calculus 1 using this book, I struggled incredibly. This class was the first class that really, really consumed my time. It really beat me up. I had a very, very hard time transitioning from learning to write just very, very basic proofs to learning to write proofs in, you know, real analysis, right? That's what this is. And I think the one thing that made it better for me was that I went to the library and I got another book. I found a book there uh, by Bartle and Sherbert. I don't have it here with me, but I do own the book. That book I thought was a little bit easier than this one. At the same time, this book has more content. Uh, this also has a lot of multivariable stuff. It's got a lot of stuff with metric spaces. It's a wonderful book, right? It's hard because it's a hard subject, but it's a wonderful book. So the point is that I think it's better to have more than one resource. So what I've done here is I have another book here, which I think is easier than this one. Let me show you. This book is wonderful because it has some wonderful solutions, both in the examples and in the back of the book. It's called Elementary Analysis, The Theory of Calculus, and it's by Ross. This is probably one of the easiest analysis books you can buy. Uh, there's other great analysis books. The one by Abbott is also really good. People always talk about it. Uh, Jay Cummings has one that's really, really thick. But this one is short, to the point, clean, concise. It starts with the piano axioms, which is like the very core. It's really basic stuff. Really, really beautiful mathematics. Highly recommend this book. If you're trying to decide which one to get, uh, and you're a beginner, get this one. I think this one is better for beginners, despite the fact that I personally love this book because it's the one I used. I do think the one by Ross is a little bit easier. So the point is that getting more than one book is a good choice. And if you're not sure which one to get, get all of them, right? If you start buying math books now, I mean, you're going to have a lot of books. I started collecting math books years ago. I mean, years ago, I started collecting math books and I've just built up my collection. The worst part about having so many math books is if you ever move from one location to another, you actually have to take your books with you. And that could be a lot of work and it's gonna be a workout to move all these books if, if and when I ever move again. Anyways, there are no shortcuts. Remember, math takes practice, it takes time. If you take anything away from this video, it's make it a daily habit, right? Try to do just even just one problem a day. And whenever you get stuck and you're spending hours and hours on a problem, really try hard to force yourself away from that problem, right? I hear it all the time. Oh, I'm the kind of person that likes to sit there for hours and work on math problems. That's great. You kind of have to be that person, but you also have to be disciplined enough to realize that, hey, this is my time. My time is valuable. I can't spend this much time on the problem. It's been, you know, two hours. Let me move away. And, and a lot of times people feel like that time spent struggling on the problem is wasted time. But not really. It's not really wasted time. You do get something from that struggle. It makes you stronger. It makes you more resilient and it builds discipline and it builds character. Do you have any advice for people watching this video? You know, people read the comments. If you have any cool stories about your personal math journey or if you have any tips for self-study for people watching this video, leave a comment because people read the comments and when you leave constructive comments, it helps other people. Also, before I forget, I do have uh, an Instagram. It's the Real Math Sorcerer. Uh, so, you know, follow me if you use Instagram and I also have a Patreon, uh, the math sorcerer, uh, is my Patreon. So if you feel like you found value in this content or whatever, if you feel like it helps you in some way, you know, if you want, consider, if not, that's okay. I'm going to keep posting videos anyways. Good luck. Go do some math.